Alexander Snitker. I'm the one from the people, not a career politician. Now I say to the media, why don't you let me in? You're in, we appreciate your time. Well, I'll come on stage now then. I'm afraid not. Why not? Why can't I answer some of their questions? Like you do the same opportunity for every candidate. I paid $10,444 to make sure my name was on the ballot. I get more weapons than all the rest of them. The people want to hear from me, and yet the advancement of the cause of responsible journalism is not going to allow me an opportunity to speak. Riff. Been speaking for the last five minutes. I understand, sir, but I'm asking at this point to be able to get on stage to answer some of these people questions. Hey, I might fall flat on my face. What do you know? Are you allowed the opportunity or not? No. 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 <laughs> let the man speak. Yeah, it's unbelievable. You're not going to let me speak. Neither did Green. No, no, neither did Green, though. You're, you're saying something that's not true. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. No, nope. look, I understand media, but I'll tell you this, you're, don't die. You are stopping the freedom of speech. Stopping the freedom of speech. The freedom of speech. Freedom of speech. This is Liberty Underground with Alex Snicker and Adrian Wiley on the 1787 Radio Network. Welcome back, our number two, Liberty Underground. If you want to call the program, the number is 727-441-3000 or 1-866-826-1340. You can also listen live at 1787network.com. Well, there's been a lot of things that have been busy this week. I know that our, uh, our politicians in Washington, D.C. have also been very busy this week. They have decided that the Bill of Rights... Uh, during the week that is like the Bill of Rights week or the Bill of Rights day yesterday, um, was the day that they started to burn the Bill of Rights. Broadcasting from this little radio station in Clearwater, Florida, Alexander Snitker now has a platform from which to exercise his freedom of speech. And he does so, expressing his political opinions quite vocally. So you're a liar. Now you vote for this bill, so you're a traitor. Um, so Alan West, liar, traitor. He's able to speak his mind because he's purchased a time slot, and he has a show which he co-hosts with his friend, Florida Libertarian Party Chairman Adrian Wiley, who served as Alex's campaign media director. Getting his voice heard was much more difficult when Alex ran for U.S. Senate in 2010 as Florida's Libertarian candidate. In fact, the mainstream media made it nearly impossible. I really thought that our narrative was going to be good. I think I was naive in the fact, not understanding exactly how in bed the media is with Democrats and Republicans and how not only will they ignore you, but they will put things in your way to stop you from getting more attention. Snitker campaigned as representing the everyday man, an alternative to career politicians. Born in Iowa, he grew up and went to school in Florida and served his country in the U.S. Marines. I got out of high school, I went to the Marine Corps and spent eight years in the Marine Corps, went to places like Haiti and Norway and Israel and um, Soviet, Soviet Georgia, as well as um, you know, other places around the Mediterranean. But Snitker would quickly and painfully discover that serving in the military and defending Americans' freedom of speech would not guarantee that he'd be allowed to exercise his own freedom of speech. Univision hosted a televised U.S. Senate debate, invited candidates Charlie Crist, Marco Rubio, and Kendrick Meek, but not Alexander Snitker. He went down to Miami anyway to plead his case, pointing out that he had paid a huge filing fee in excess of $10,000 required by the state of Florida to be on the ballot. Once you've met that bar, which I have assumed, and once again even I assumed, that the $10,000 was the bar. That I get this money, I pay you guys, I pay you your, 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 your penance, that you, I'm in with, with everybody else's. And that was not the case. 7735. We are standing out front at the guard gate. Thank you. No, oh, I understand. Oh, no, no. They said they were doing your job. Well, he's actually trying to get on the phone, Angela Spencer. Yeah, well, you okay, well, you can back away. Okay. Yeah, private, private property. No, back off, then. Okay. Yeah, sorry, off. sir. No, no, no. You're not sorry, but that's okay. No, back off, man. You're filming me. Yeah. Why not? It's, it's pretty disturbing, quite frankly. You know, it's, it's not what we were taught in civics class, and it's not what we were led to believe. Uh, they're, they're definitely, and it's far beyond immediate, just simple bias. Uh, it really is they control 
who the public is able to perceive as viable. We tried repeatedly to be included in the debates. And of course they said, well, you're not polling high enough. And our response was, well, you're not including his name on the poll. So how can we meet a poll that his name is not on? It's, it's impossible. So you've set up a paradox for us. Um, in fact, uh, it, it, the term, the Snicker paradox, actually evolved from this campaign. I believe it was Howard Troxler of the St. Petersburg Time uh, that was uh, first to coin the phrase. And Troxler happened to be at the podium the night of the U.S. Senate debate viewing party at the University of South Florida. Yes, another debate in which Snitker was excluded. Snitker was barred from the USF debate, but he did find an audience at the viewing party, and he managed to win many of them over. To secure our borders? You mean national defense? National defense. National defense. I think the first thing we have to understand is that the Constitution was very specific, and that we should actually bring our troops home, unless we wage war, unless we declare war. That's it. There's no other way. Simple. Any other questions? Right now, it's the hyperinflation that's getting ready to come our way through the Federal Reserve System. Thank you. We need to have a full audit of the Federal Reserve. Next question. I don't need two minutes to answer like these guys over here do. I want you guys to understand because everybody here is watching this debate. The word constitution was not said. Yep. One time. The media was not going to protect this former Marine's freedom of speech. They were simply going to ignore him and his message. And it wasn't just the exclusion from the televised debates. It was a total media blackout. PolitiFact Florida decided to investigate Snitker's claim that he had been, quote, virtually ignored by the major media. They searched for mentions of Snitker in Florida newspapers over the first three months of 2010 and compared that to mentions of Chris Rubio and Meek. The results are best told by these charts I created. Christ topped the list with 2,292. No surprise, he was campaigning for Senate while serving as governor. Rubio got 861. Meek received 286. And Snitker had two. Not 200. Two. His little bubble is so small, it doesn't even include his name, much like the polls. Check out this pie chart. His slice of the media coverage pie is that thin little line at the top. One could accurately say that Snitker's campaign was starved to death by the media. Both uh, Charlie Chris, the independent, of course, uh, uh, the sitting governor at the time, and uh, Kendrick Meek, uh, both publicly supported Alex being included in the debates. Um, and uh, the, the media still wanted, they wouldn't even talk about it. They wouldn't even make it an issue publicly whether he should be included. The Republican candidate, Marco Rubio, did not join Christ and Meek in supporting Snitker's inclusion. So the Snitker campaign fought back with this campaign ad. Alex Snicker being excluded from the debates. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Any comment on Alex Snicker being excluded from the debates? Because I'll answer any question at any time with no preconditions whatsoever. He just wouldn't get that opportunity at any of the televised debates. He went to every one of them and was turned away at each one. They began to formulate new strategies, including one at WFTV Channel 9 in Orlando. They threatened to arrest us if we went onto the Channel 9 
uh, news property. Um, but uh, fortunately, there's a park directly across the street, so we set up in the park, and uh, that, that was a uh, that was a, a fun encounter. This was after several uh, debates had already uh, happened, and we knew there was no way they were going to let Alex in because we the pattern had repeated itself several times. So we said, okay, if if they're not going to include us in the debate, we're going to hold our own debate. And uh, so we had someone watching the debate, relaying the questions to me. Uh, then I would ask Alex the same questions, and uh, you know we had a little PA system there. WFTV's debate gave Chris Rubio and Meek a platform on which to air their messages to a large audience. Channel 9's news director is Bob Jordan, one of the most successful and most respected news directors in the business. I asked him why Snitker was excluded from that debate. In our judgment at the time, uh, the, the three candidates that, that you mentioned were all viable. And, 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 and if you go back in time and, and, and look at the press that they were all getting, they were the race at the time. Obviously, we're not going to have a debate with ten candidates. We're not going to have a debate with five candidates. Unless uh, the polls would indicate that there are five candidates that are all viable. Ah, uh, viable. Interesting term, and one that Florida Press Association CEO and President Dean Ridings used frequently in defending the FPA's exclusion of Snitker from the debates and from their candidate forum. In an email responding to my questions, he used the term viable three times in four sentences. Yes, there has to be some cutoff, but how exactly does the FPA define a viable candidate? Ridings response? one who has met all of the qualifications to run and has achieved a specified level of public support, which to them is 15% in the polls. That criteria denies voters a chance to hear fresh ideas from third-party candidates. Alternatives? Sure. How about a candidate who is paid to be on the ballot, has an operating budget, has a campaign manager, is actively campaigning with paid staff and volunteers, and has a clearly stated platform and goals? A third-party candidate has a chance of hitting those requirements, but no chance of hitting the FPA's requirements when they aren't listed in the polls. Oh, there was one time the name Snitker was listed in a poll. Tampa's Bay News 9 listed him, but then things got a little weird. He actually was up to 27% in this online poll. He was in second place. What Bay News 9 did is when they realized he was polling that high, they took his name off and replaced it with other. The final poll had uh, Rubio, Christ, Meek, other at 27%, and then other at 1%. So the, the final poll, because they changed his name, actually had two others. And one of them was, of course, Alec. Just the fact that he was showing well, and that could have um, generated more support for the campaign because people look at this poll and goes, wow, who's this Alex Snicker guy that's running at 27%? I better look him up. They change his name to other. I don't know whether it's malicious. I don't know whether it's um, the corporations, the, the mammoth corporations who do have uh, dogs in this race. Uh, you know, they have a vested interest in the outcome. I don't know if it's them actually pushing to their, their media companies to do it that way, or if it's just kind of a herd mentality. The media, I, I always felt, in some cases, does have a herd mentality. And if they say, well, none of the other media outlets are included in this guy, we better not. I don't want to leave anybody with the impression that, that we meet in some kind of a, a dark room and decide, well, there's only going to be three, or it's only going to be these two. and by for no matter what happens, we won't let that guy or woman in. That those conversations never happen. He didn't meet certain criteria here, or he didn't poll well here, or he didn't meet this criteria here. This is where I'll say he paid ten thousand dollars to get his name on the ballot. He did raise sixty thousand dollars without you. He had a campaign staff of about 15, 15 people that were, I mean, working you know many hours a day just the the, uh, the staff part not to mention hundreds of volunteers around the state of Florida are you telling me that those people that are doing those things are not worth it for you to add one more chair to a debate it's not because we want to exclude somebody 
we have to have a manageable situation in order to produce a manageable program. In order for my campaign to have, could, to have credibility, I have to be shown with the other candidates. You as the media had the ability to make that happen. You chose not to. I didn't say that it's easy to become a public figure, and the obligation for someone to be a, become a public figure is theirs, not ours. But without the media, becoming a public figure and winning an election is nearly impossible. With virtually no assistance from the mainstream media, Alex Snitker managed nearly 25,000 votes in the election. How many more he might have received had he not been barred from the debates? We'll never know. An irony here. Had Jordan stepped in and created a spot for Snitker at the table for the WFTV debate, he may have heard someone whose view of the two-party system is not all that different from his own. Larry, if you're asking my personal opinion, and I speak now as Bob Jordan, citizen of the United States of America, uh, as George Wallace used to say, there's not a dime's worth of difference between the parties. Our, our politics today, our government is run, let's be honest, by moneyed special interests. And uh, when you get through all the, the talking points and the fog, we're left with the same thing. Congress that can't get anything done, uh, adults who do nothing but bicker and blame each other. I'm personally sick of it. But that very system is unlikely to change as long as the mainstream media continues to support a status quo system that favors the two major parties and muzzles any dissenting third party voices, such as the voice of Alexander Snitker. I care less about staying in Washington for 30 or 40 or 50 years. I want to go up there for six years, make the changes, and then come home and live by those same laws. Because in reality, I just want to be left alone. I don't know how to run your life. I don't know what's best for you. I just know that the federal government doesn't either. And I'm going to fight every day until I tear down this political class in this country. And I ask for your vote on November 2nd. 30% is all it's going to need in order to win this thing. I get it from everybody, left and right. I pull everyone together. And I do because there's other people on the other side that believe in a constitutional republic. They just don't believe the Republicans are going to provide it. I will provide this. I'm getting the two-minute warning, but I'm way ahead of time. It's unbelievable. Again, all I'd like to say is I thank you very much for, your, for the opportunity to speak today. I ask you to go to my booth in the back to take a look at what I stand. I've been here for the entire day, and I'll be here until this thing's over. We're some of the first ones here. We'll be some of the last ones out. Because we want to make sure that every one of you has an opportunity to go back there and ask me questions. I try to pride myself on being the most accessible candidate in this race. Because I'll answer any question at any time with no preconditions whatsoever. The other thing I would ask you to do is this. Call every debate that is going on right now and ask them for one thing. And whether you are a Rubio supporter or a Chris supporter or a Meek supporter, you should be able to accept or be supportive of the fact that I should be included in the debate. The only thing in this, in this race I've ever asked for is the equal opportunity to be able to speak. Because I will tell you this, I watched the debate last night just like the rest of y'all did. If I was included in that race or in that debate, I have no doubt in my mind, I would have won hands down. I challenge all of them constantly to debate me and none of them do. Why? I'm a regular guy, right? Do I really sound like I'm this big scholarly guy? I'm just a regular citizen like the rest of y'all are. Why would you be afraid to fight me? Because I speak the truth. Because I'm willing to take the stance on things that no one else is. Now again, I say I thank you very much for your time. Please come in the booth in the back if you have any additional questions. But help me tear down the political class in this country because that's the only thing that's going to save our republic. And I thank you for your time.